Hi, this is JJ D. Geronimo, the president of Tech Savvy Women and Purposeful Woman, and you have joined our Women in STEM series. Today, we have Megan with us from The Ohio State University. I met Megan a few weeks ago in a Tech Savvy Women event, and she was actually on the panel. She was our youngest panelist, uh, obviously being a college student, uh, but she has started a company at the age of 15. So Megan, I would love to get into how you got started. You are, you know, not many girls in college already have a business underneath their belt. So let's back up and talk to us a little bit about how you started your company at 15. Well, I was playing competitive golf for eight years before I started my company. And freshman year of high school, I ended up not playing golf anymore, leaving the sport. And I didn't actually have much to do with my time, and a lot of my friends were getting a job. And I wanted a way to make money and, like, participate in going to the mall and buying food and what have you. But I didn't want to go get a job. I didn't want to go work at McDonald's or Wendy's or Kroger or any of the places my friends were working. So I thought, why don't I make an app? People are making apps, and that's a way to make money. And plus, that's what I want to do when I grow up. So I just made it, I made an app and I started doing it and it wasn't until I had three or four apps that I realized I could call this a company and that wasn't a lie. And that was a huge milestone for me saying I have a company instead of saying I have an app. That is wonderful. And do you, are all your apps aligned to a certain initiative or how did you decide how to develop apps and what apps to develop? Uh, I wanted to start with apps for autistic children because I felt like that app market was a bit behind. A lot of the apps looked like computer programs from, I guess, one or two decades ago and that they'd just been moved to the iPad. Right. And I thought they didn't have any actual well-designed apps, so I thought that was a good place for me to start. I can make them well-designed apps, learn how the app store works, like learn the ropes, as it were. And do you have, like, did you have a test base or how did you, you know, how were you aware of that and how did you get acquainted with people to see if the apps actually worked? People actually approached me. When people bought the app and they, like, said, thought it did or didn't work, they would email the support email in the app store or they'd find my company online. They'd, they'd take the initiative to contact me. And I got I started a Facebook page for the company, and people started reaching out to me a ton through there. There's a there's a nice tight knit community of people who care for autism on Facebook. And what is your Facebook fan page? It's just Pufferfish Software. Pufferfish Software, which is also your company. And so now you have three. Are you said you have four apps now? We have six now. You have six apps, and they're all um, around autism and helping autistic children. And you continue, are you planning to continue down this route? Not for very much longer. I'm looking for a way to like exit the apps for autism thing because I really enjoyed the work while it lasted, but what I've really been interested in since childhood is getting into like productivity software and like software for authors and like project managers and like I guess other other areas. Women out there and even men listening in, where did you hire your resources to help you build your apps? There's a website called odesk.com, online desk, and it's just, it's a website that connects, you know, clients to contractors in like every field you can imagine that can be done over the internet. And I went to the mobile app, you know, software programming part of the website and just you set up a job posting and you interview people and then you pick someone and then they have tools to manage the team, um, manage what works done, manage deadlines and files and all this other stuff. This is amazing. And Megan, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you now? I'm 18. I just turned 18. That is so for in the last three years, you've developed six apps. You've basically established a subsidiary of a company. And I know you've been named in several magazines and several lists as people to know and up and coming uh, people in, uh, in the tech area. So what advice can you give women listening in that have an app idea, but they don't know where to get started? That's a question I get asked a lot. I actually started writing a book and posted it on I, on the iPad bookstore because I get questions like that so much about how to get started. It's called Little Idea, Big Dream, and I'm trying to bring it to a publisher right now. But the short version is just go design your idea and 
give it life. Give it some way that you could talk to other people about it. And then if it ends up being a good idea, if it is something people want, you can go take those steps to get graphic designers or programmers. Right. And you talk a lot about that's great advice, and I'm definitely going to post it up there for you. But one of the things I want to know, too, is have you leveraged any online communities or any groups online to help sort of get advice and get ideas and share concepts? I haven't actually leveraged that a lot online. I read a lot of, like, blogs about app design and business and such. But it's the communities here in town that have been really helpful, like talking to Tech Columbus and the commercialization office at OSU have just been so helpful. That's great. And so what has sort of weighed you down in the process? Is there anything that you're like, oh, man, I definitely either have to hire this out or I'm not going to do this part again? Sales. Sales. <laughs> sales. Yeah. I am not a salesman. I'm a product guy. <laughs> Oh, that's so great. Well, we're excited <laughs> to hear that your next step is going to be about, you know, production and getting more um, apps out there for people to actually get from step A to step B to step C. It's very exciting. So how do people reach you? Yeah, I get a lot of requests on LinkedIn. Um, I'm Emmy Holstein on LinkedIn. You can go to my company's website, pufferfishapps.com. Contact the support email there. I'm Emmy Holstein of pufferfishapps.com. I put my cell phone number on every single social media networking website I have. I try to make it really easy for people to talk to me. I think that's great. And I just love the fact that you've done so much in short, such a short amount of time and meeting you in person. Uh, it's great to see you're still a kid at heart, but I really just admire your tenacity of just keep pushing forward and already setting the bar uh, on your next initiative. So you're going to be working on these apps while you're going to school. And what are you going to school for? Business management. Business management. Could it be anything else? So I was just curious. So you have, you know, you have a business in technology, but you're going for business. Are you going to take a minor in any types of technology? I'm going to take a minor in entrepreneurship. I actually can't take a specialization at the business school because most of the specializations are geared towards non-tech industries, towards like retail and product lines, and that's not what I want. So I'm going to have to end up building my own specialization. I think that's awesome. And then do you have any advice for girls in high school that maybe are dabbling in the computer center or, you know, just trying to figure out what they should go to school for? I mean, what type of advice can you give them now already being in college and starting so many initiatives so early in life? I know that it can be hard to pick a major or decide where you want to go in life. Not from, like, my own personal experience, I guess, but I, I know quite a few people who are juniors in college and they still don't know what they want so it's really hard to tell people to go out and achieve all these things when they don't even know what those things might be sure so if you do know what you want don't be afraid to go for it don't let your age get in the way don't get in your own head about it just go and do it and figure it out later and I know that sounds really foolish but if you go read the stories of lots of successful people that's how it happened so that's what I have to say for that. And if you don't know what you want yet, don't pressure yourself over it. Just try new things. You will find it. Yeah, I mean, just I think just knowing you and, and in this interview, just the tenacity and the fact that, you know, even if you don't have somebody in your network, you go out and hire people on the sites available to them. And you don't stop at no. You just keep pushing forward. And it just I just think you're an awesome example for young women that have so many ideas but don't really know how to funnel them into something. So thank you, Megan, so much for joining us. And we look forward to keeping posted on uh, your next big endeavor. It's, I've, this was great being here. <laughs>